Hey there, my name is Zhao Chen, and I'm a product manager on the .NET Data Access team. Today, I'm going to show you how you can access a SQLite database and query data from it just by writing C Sharp. In the next five-ish minutes, I'm going to tell you what SQLite databases are and why you might consider using them. I'm also going to talk you through the four different ways you can work with SQLite using C Sharp and help you figure out which one to choose for your project. Last but definitely not least, I'm going to jump right into the code so you can see for yourself how easy it can be to get SQLite set up with C Sharp. The thing about SQLite is you're probably already using it. It's the most popular database engine out there because it's built into all mobile phones, most computers, and even some fridges. It's so self-contained that the sample database I'm using in my code sample is actually included right in the GitHub repository. Of the four different ways you can use C Sharp with a SQLite database, you're going to have high-level options like Entity Framework Core on the left, which will help you work with data like objects and avoid learning SQL at all by writing C Sharp to generate your queries instead. This also holds true for SQLite-Net, which provides a lot of the same functionality, but is a bit better for mobile cases. If you want a bit more performance and something lightweight and might prefer to write your own SQL queries, Dapper will be a great option. On the far right, we have ADL.NET, which is the most low level of our options, meaning you're going to handle the database connection and the data querying all on your own. However, ADL.NET does apply for all scenarios, even the really weird ones, and you'll get a really good understanding of exactly what your code does. Now let's take a look at some code and see what each of these four options look like in action. So let's start off with the EF core approach, which is going to be the most high level. You can see that the project structure is pretty straightforward. We have the model.cs file where we configure EF core to point to our database. And then we create a class named blog. This is going to be the form in which our data will get brought into our program. Let's take a look at program.cs. This is where our console application lives. We see that our database is brought in as an instance called db. Then we can immediately query that database using c -sharp code down in line 11 to 14. Then we read things out. That's it. Let's take a look at what this looks like in action. I'm going to go over to debug, start without debugging. Cool, got my blog. Now, let's say you are working on a mobile application or you care a bit more about performance. SQLite-Net could be a good option. The file structure is pretty similar but the model.cs file looks a lot simpler than the one at EF core. That's because we're not bringing in the whole database, but rather putting them in the form of the blog objects. As a result, the program.cs file looks pretty similar. The only thing is our database is represented as a table of logs, which we can then query. Let's take a look at what that gets us. Cool, got my blog. Now let's mix things up a little bit. Let's say you're pretty used to writing SQL and you would rather write that instead of C Sharp. Or maybe you're working with thousands of queries at once and performance is really important for you. In that case, Dapper could be a good option. Looking at the model.cs program, we can see, huh, looks pretty similar to SQLite-Net. It's only when we get into program.cs where we start seeing the big differences. Dapper handles the connection to the database for you, but you can see that there's no c -sharp code that's generating your query. You have to write your query yourself and then pass it in manually. I'm going to run this application so you can see what it does. Cool. So you can see that it essentially does the same thing. The only difference is you're writing SQL instead of C Sharp. Now, let's say your scenario is pretty specific or you just want to get a very hands-on view on what you're writing. In that case, check out ADL.NET. The file structure is 
really different from the other ones. There's just a one program.cs. And that's because we're not bringing in data in the form of objects. So there's no need to define them in another file. Instead, we create our database connection manually. We write the SQL and pass it in. And the data we get back is not going to be in the form of an object. Instead, it's going to be lines of text that we can then transform. But it's not going to be easy to query that data immediately. Now that we've looked at all four options in action, let's take a look at the important pieces. EF Core is a great option if you want to write C Sharp instead of SQL, otherwise known as language integrated queries or link, and if you want to use data in the form of objects. Similarly, for SQLite-Net, you get the abstraction that comes with link instead of SQL and objects instead of data, but it's further optimized for mobile cases. Then, if you want to go a bit lighter, Dapper lets you use data in the form of objects and connect to the database really easily, while also being lightweight and letting you write your own SQL. Last but not least, ADL.NET offers pretty much no abstraction at all and works for all scenarios, the cons being you'll have to do everything yourself. Anyways, thank you for watching through this video. And you can find the .NET Data Access team, also known as the Unicorn Squad, on Twitter, Reddit, GitHub, and others. If you're curious about the code, here's a link to the GitHub repository so you can dive in yourself.